Hi there. I want to talk about potassium and sodium. These are two major macro minerals, known also as electrolytes, and their major role in the body is to regulate the fluid balance in the cells and the space within the cells. Now, sodium <coughs> regulates the fluids in extracellular space, which is the space between the cells, while potassium regulates the fluids within the cell. It's called intercellular space. And th those two have to be in perfect balance. Otherwise, we will end up having less fluids within the cell, more in the uh, extracellular space or other way around. Now, so let's start with sodium. The sodium is the main uh, positively charged uh, electron and uh, is responsible for regulating obviously fluids within the cell. Uh, sodium also regulates pH balance and helps uh, regular delivery of nutrients in the cells and also regular uh, uh, regular removal of byproducts from the cells. So sodium plays an extremely important role. Sodium also regulates something called osmotic, os osmotic pressure. Osmotic pressure actually regulates intake and exertion of uh, intake of nutrients and exertion of byproducts from every cell in the body. And if that osmotic pressure is not as it should be, we're going to have big, big problems on, on, on a major uh, scale uh, concerning tissues in the bodies. Sodium also <coughs> regulates the blood volume in the, in the body. So if there is not enough sodium in the body, the blood volume will be low. This is extremely important, especially for people, this is important to know, for people who are taking diuretics or thinking about taking diuretics. Because what happens, what may happen, uh, with lowering sodium in the body, you can cause the condition called hyponitremia. And that condition can cause heart attack, swelling of the brain, and obviously death. We know very well that few bodybuilders, professional bodybuilders, had died on the, on the stage performing because of abuse of diuretics. And what I'm I'm just explaining to you now is actually the cause of that. Basically, low sodium level in the body. Uh, bodybuilders are known to drink unreasonably huge amount of water all the time and also eat low amount of sodium. And that's obviously wrong. You don't want to do that because doing that, you are actually playing the same playing as, as, as with diuretics. You are leaching out, taking out sodium of the body, you're washing it out with lots of water, and then you're not eating enough. So basically your blood volume <coughs> can come down, and that can be catastrophic. So you have to consider taking sodium salt in your diet. It's very, very important. It's the major macro mineral, the major electrolyte, sodium. Now where is sodium? Where can you find it in the food? <coughs> so basically it's everywhere, but most food highly concentrated with sodium are uh, eggs, fish and meat. We have it a bit in the apples, some vegetables, but mainly fish, eggs and meat. Uh, having said that, I still advise people to take extra salt in the diet because it is recommended for uh, inactive people to take one gram of salt a day, while active people, bodybuilders, should take up to three grams a day. Now, which salt? We, when we talk salt, we're talking we, we straight away. Think about table salt, white table salt. But white table salt is so processed that it contains only two minerals: it's sodium and chloride, and they are in very high concentration. They they can cause a lot of damage if you overeat that table salt. They, they are not. This is not good for you. There is a better choice. There is something called Celtic or Himalayan salt. So, healthy and Himalayan salt are actually unprocessed sea salt. 
and it contains 84 minerals in the perfect balance. This is how much minerals seawater contains and funny enough this is how much minerals you find in human body. So all those 84 in perfect balance you can find in for example Himalayan salt. So it's a sea salt but unprocessed, intact. So if even if you buy sea salt it will still be processed but it won't contain 84 minerals. It's got to be Celtic or Celtic or Himalayan salt. So this uh, this is about um, sodium. Let us now talk about potassium. Potassium regulates the amount of fluid within the cell, so is responsible for the fluid in intercellular space. Now, potassium and sodium uh, uh, they create something called potassium sodium pump which is actually responsible for transport of nutrients through, uh, via fluids in the cell and also transport of byproducts uh, via fluids outside the cell. So that constant movement of fluids containing nutrients and taking them into the cell and then taking the byproducts from the metabolism, cell metabolism outside the cell is regulated by that potassium sodium pump. If that potassium sodium pump is in perfect condition, then uh, we have good functioning of the kidneys, nervous system and also muscle contractions. So that sodium potassium pump is extremely important. This is why sodium and potassium have to be taken uh, to, to our diet in the right balance. Unfortunately, Modern diets uh, contain too much sodium and not enough potassium. So the ratio between sodium and potassium in our modern diets is 3 to 1. Now, if you look at natural foods, they contain sodium and potassium in very different proportion. is 1 to 7. So we should aim through our diet and to supplementation of sodium in our diet, sometimes also supplementation of potassium in, in extremely uh, advanced, intense bodybuilding uh, scenario, we should aim the uh, ratio between sodium and potassium be 1 to 4. So at the moment, modern diets are 3 to 1 sodium to potassium, which is catastrophic really. And it should be one to four. Uh, <clears throat> message to bodybuilders: people who only eat chicken and rice all day long, obviously don't get enough potassium into their diet. So potassium comes from vegetables, comes also from fish, meat, but vegetables, green vegetables, they are full of potassium. Potassium can also be found in uh, baked potatoes, in bananas, pumpkin seeds. But don't forget, I advise everybody to have at least half of your plate should be dark green vegetables. Not only chicken and rice, but make sure you put those vegetables inside. Because they will, they will be responsible for your, the right ratio of your sodium and potassium in your diet. And as I explained, that sodium potassium pump can only function perfectly if we supply enough potassium and enough sodium to our bodies. So guys, uh, I hope you understood that uh, importance of uh, sodium and potassium and how much you need to take on a daily basis uh, and I hope you liked the video and if you did you know what to do and I will see you in the next video.